Welcome to the Late Night Gamer and today I'm going to play Arkham Horror. Now why would I want to do that? I mean Arkham Horror, there are tons of videos on Arkham Horror. Well, I'm not only going to play Arkham Horror, I'm going to include the entire Arkham Horror family as you can see now. Um, several expansions, four big ones and four small ones. So I'm going to play a game incorporating all these expansions into one. Um, I haven't done that before and there's a couple of expansions I haven't played before even. Namely Kingsport and Innsmouth, two of the big ones. Never tried those, so I want to try them. And there's also, uh, well I don't know if it's a rumor, uh, saying that when you play Arkham Horror with all the boards there are very little action on some of the boards. So now I'm going to find out. If that is really true. Well, last time I played was almost a year ago, so I'm bound to do mistakes. And this first episode is all going to be about setup and introduction to well, not the game, uh, not not the game, not the not the rules and how to play the game. There are plenty of good YouTube videos on that. I'm not going to do that. Rather, I'm going to use the first episode to talk about the different expansions and the rules they add on to the base game very briefly and uh, just so that we know what to expect from the different boards. After that I'm going to set up the game and then we will start playing. So before I mentioned YouTube videos about the rules, I there's a couple of recommendations. I'm sure uh, the one for me is the playthrough series from Box of the Lights uh, where Rick plays through Arkham Horror with the Dunwich expansion. For me that was when I discovered Arkham Horror and I am eternally grateful for that because this is my favorite game. So warning to you all, this is not going to be any unbiased playthrough. I am totally biased. I love this game. There is nothing in it that is wrong for me. There are quirks, real, real quirks for sure, but I think it gives flavor. Now, Before we start I also want to say that this is not about rules. This video and this game is not about rules, it's not about mechanics. It's about the story that unfolds. It's about the things, the happenings that occurs and affects the poor investigators as they uh, roam around in Arkham trying to survive, trying to find out what is going on and trying to survive the onslaught of the ancient one and all his minions that are flooding, well, that are coming on the board. So if I haven't played the game with all the expansions, how on earth am I supposed to know what's going on in the different expansions? That is a tough question and the key to that is this phenomenal uh, reference sheet, Arkham Horror module reference sheet, uploaded to BGG by Sebelon, I think. Without it, this wouldn't have been possible. This is a phenomenal tool and it color codes the different expansions. Um, you just refer to the different faces and looking for the color coding for the expansions you're using. You are using all the expansions, so all apply for instance during setup. You can see that um, the black one is the base game and then there is some blue writing here which is from Innsmouth Horror instructing us to incorporate uh, elements from that game into the setup. And so it is for all the game faces. I don't think you can see the writing, but you can see the colors. There's some blue colors here, and there's a red one here, and there are different faces as we go through. So five pages, and that will allow me, or that will enable me to recognize all the different uh, elements from different expansions when they come into play. So thank you a lot, Sebulon, or Sebulon. This is for me the most important uh, file that has been created for Arkham Horror. Okay, so um, let's have a brief look on the different expansions and what they bring to the game. Before you see the city of Arkham, which we all know and love, the base game that is. This is undoubtedly where the main action is going to happen. 
So to this fascinating environment, we're going to add on these four small expansions. Because I haven't done this before, I don't know how much of each expansion is going to appear in the game when you play with everything. So I'm just going to very, very briefly uh, look on these expansions and what they bring. So let's start with the Lurker at the Threshold. Of course, all the expansions bring tons of new cards that add on to the, to the uh, already existing cards in the base game. So I'm not going to talk about that. The Lurker adds on relationship cards so that the investigators can have a relationship with each other. All of these expansions also has a Herald, and that Herald augments the gameplay in a negative way. It's a Herald for the Deep One, or the Ancient One. And we see that also here, that when you play with certain Heralds, certain elements come into play, which is only true when that Herald is in place. So, and I'm not going to talk more about that uh, unless we select that particular Herald during gameplay. So if you use the Lurker Herald, then we'll use the Dark Pacts as well. So common game elements are that there are new gate markers with the Lurker, giving gates now new abilities. They can move, they can influence your sanity, your physical form, etc. So we'll be using those new gate markers. Briefly here we can see that the different gate markers will have different symbols, meaning different things. Power tokens are something that are used with, with that particular Herald variant, if the Lurker is the Herald. Okay, so next, next up is the revised edition of the Curse of the Dark Pharaoh. Of course, again, we will see a new Herald for the Dark Pharaoh, but then we'll also see that there is an um, exhibition in Arkham, and that exhibition is of Egyptian items that is rumored to have a mythic or mystic ability or magic ability. Um, there are, uh, so this exhibit is going on, and there are some rumors or some ancient whispers that are moving around the city. When we encounter these ancient whispers, we get an encounter and we may up uh, with some powerful items in our inventory if you're lucky. If not, bad things happen. You also may see that the neighborhoods, different neighborhoods with in Arkham with, uh, will go on patrol. We may also see some benefit and some detriment cards come into play, which will again augment the ability of the investigators in a positive or a negative way. And that's it for the Curse of the Dark Pharaoh. Let's talk about the blackout of the woods. So the theme here is that there is a cult, a new cult, Cult of the Thousand, which you can be a member of, and you can also become corrupt. So, so basically, these corruption cards will come into effect uh, if you if you decide to join the cult of thousand, and then you will have cult encounter card, uh, cult encounters at certain location instead of normal encounters. We may up ending growing corruption card. So that's the black goat of the woods. So it may seem it may seem not not so substantial, but add on that there are a new herald in each of the. Uh, expansions and there are new monsters, there are new cards for every location. You get a very substantial or a very, very big addition to the game. This is the expansion I fear the most. I think this expansion is very likely to end our game prematurely because it's so terrible. It's just horrible. Yeah. This is a play going on in Arkham, a theater play, in three acts. If it ever gets to act three, we are all go insane and the city is lost and we have lost the game instantly so there's no waking up of the ancient one there is nothing it's just instant death so if you want to play this game uh, or this expansion fully you need to use uh, the uh, the king in yellow herald i'm not sure if that herald is coming up if it comes up we'll draw randomly if it comes up we'll use it of course then we use all of these blight cards and the yellow sign tokens, etc, etc. If not, we are only going to concern ourselves about the act of the play, which is going to tick on and we need to fight that. The Miskatonic Horror expansion adds on new act cards that works better or is better integrated uh, in the game now that we play with many different expansions. So it's even worse. 
In addition, there are some magical effects that can happen due to spells that comes up. You can get some magic, uh, magical effects going on. I probably also should mention that there are different styles of play. Um, and I'm talking about gameplay as well as theater play, because we can either have a two-ring performance style, in where we will use the um, location event cards from the King in Yellow before the other, but we are not going to do that. We're going to integrate that, integrate the play into the gameplay, if that makes any sense. So we're going to have a permanent performance style. The King in Yellow is not the focus, it's not the new thing in town, it's something that has been there for a while, I guess. And so they may come up or they may not come up. Um, specific event related to the King in Yellow. Alright, that, that was all the small expansions. Uh, welcome to the city of Dunwich. Um, this is, as we can see, a separate board that is added to the game and this is one of the big box expansions. Now there are three new areas or um, districts and new locations, as we can see here, in addition to a couple of new other worlds that we can travel to and close gates from, to and from. In Dunwich there is also a Dunwich Horror track and if that track fills up the Dunwich Horror Awakens, which is a terrible monster. It will roam around the streets and we need to fight it because when it's on, there is they, they are, it's, it's radically shortened the time we will have until the great old one wakes up. The Dunwich board has these vortexes here that um, you cannot enter as an investigator, but if a monster due to monster movement roams into one of these vortexes, the terror track rises and also the Dunwich horror track rises. So you can see there's only three spots available here until the Dunwich horror awakens. And so it may be a good idea to have an investigator in Dunwich trying to prevent monsters going into these vortexes, depending on how many monsters there are in Dunwich, of course. So if this guy wakes up, this is the Dunwich horror, <laughs> It may not look terrible, but it is. So if this guy wakes up, he will start roaming around the board because he has a monster movement of a moon. I flip it, you can see its effect. But it says it doesn't move, so it will always stay at Sentinel Hill, I think. Uh, instead of moving, we roll a die, and on a 4 to 6, we will add one Doom token to the Doom track. Now, in addition to this, and you can see this monster is extremely tough, Drawing from this deck of cards will tell us uh, the uh, the effect or the monster abilities for um, for this particular fight. So it may be an ambush monster. I mean, it may be have magical resistance. So if you go into the full of magical weapons, it may happen that it doesn't work. And I'm sure there's one for physical resistance as well. Well, another one for magical and physical. You see here we are totally well. This is going to be tough, right? <laughs> So, yeah, so um, fighting it is not something that is easy. In addition now, instead of losing our health, we can take some injured cards, in injured cards, and if, and instead of losing our sanity and go to the asylum, we can now take some madness cards, which will give different effects. This particular one is depression, basically says that you, the first crew token that you spend in a skill check it has no effect. So you have to spend two in order to have one extra die. And it also says that if you have two different depression cards, you are devolved. Injured card here is, is a skin rash, has some effect, and again, if you have two injured cards, you are devolved. So you can only have one of each. So it gives a nice mechanic so that you don't have to lose yeah, half your money and half your, your items. When you lose your health, instead you can become injured or mad. That's a good thing, I'm not so sure, but at least that's how uh, this is designed. Before you, you see the city of Innsmouth, or the town of Innsmouth, which again adds different districts and different locations. And some of the locations, like the Devil Reef and why not and clay and and clay oh. <laughs> well anyway this guy or these locations are not connected to the 
the other locations in Innsmouth. To get here we need to go through Falcon's Point and do whatever it says here. We may be transported to Devil's Reef. Again we see vortices that if monsters wander into vortices will hit our doom track. This expansion also add monsters that move according to aquatic movement. Also if we are arrested in Innsmouth we are not taken to the jail in Arkham but we are taken to the Innsmouth jail with different effects. Right. So the Sobon Alley is a special place because if you end up in the Innsmouth jail you won't be let out so easily as in Arkham. Instead, other people can move up here and help you break out. When half of the Doom Track is filled on the Ancient One, there is martial law in Innsmouth, and every time you move, you have to make a evade check. Or rather, a sneak check. It's not an evade check, it's a sneak check. And the number here underneath will augment that sneak check. For instance, moving in Innsmouth Shore here. Then we have to make a sneak plus one, which is a good thing, but the rollers that also have a minus one to the sneak check. This one here is the deep one racing track, and this is the, uh, what is this called? It's called the Federation, no it's called, <laughs> not the Federation, um, the Federal Raid track. So if this track ever fills up, the, the, uh, the great old one will immediately wake up, and you have to go to the final battle. So every time a gate is prevented from being opened, say by an Elder Sign or by a special ability or something else, which I'm not sure what that could be, but I'm sure there are many ways. Each time that happens, we have to add one to this track. So there's an extra penalty for sealing a lot of gates, because then this track will build up quickly. And also, if a monster goes into the vortices on this um, board in Innsmouth, then the deep one track will raise up. Uh, to counter that we can do some fed, federal raids or ask the FBI to intervene and raid. So we can, so basically investigators in Innsmouth can put on one, one or two crew tokens during the upkeep phase. And when the track fills up, all the tokens both on the deep one rising track and on the FBI raiding track is purged. So we basically use crew tokens to prevent the great old one from wake up. So the last thing is Kingsport. This is Kingsport. And Kingsport has two um, new worlds to explore. It has locations, but it also has the special rifts that can wake up. Oh no, well, the rifts can well, the story is that in Kingsport, the, uh, there's a very thin layer between the different realities and we can get rifts between these layers and these rifts start wandering or going around the board. A lot of this will make more sense when we start playing, I hope. I'm again Kingsport, something new to me, so I'm not, well, I'm looking forward to see how this plays out and how this works. I don't know how this works. Also, Kingsport add-on Guardians, which is a counter being to the Heralds, a good being, that is, that will help us. There are also epic battles and Ancient One plot cards that comes into play. So, when the final battle occurs, now we have a new way that that battle can occur through this epic battle. We'll see when that, or if that happens, if we survive that long. Still, I think our greatest threat is the King in Yellow. So the absolutely last expansion I'm going to talk about now and the last expansion that exists is the Miskatonic Horror which basically adds on a lot of new cards uh, for all the decks and integrating the different boards or the, and the different towns together and different expansions together through events and, and um, text describing the other, other types of boards or the types of expansions. Uh, there are some institutions that are in the game that will help us and we will be probably using the institution variant. I think we need all the help we can get in this game. Okay, so I'm now going to set up the game and talk you through setup very briefly because uh, it's not within the scope of this video or these videos to really show you how to do that. But let's 
do a little bit of it anyway. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 